dear students trying to reach out to you after a long break through this media it has been very long since we met i'm sure the anxiety was a kind of extended anxiety for you to have finished your exam but we can't blame anyone the pandemic covid-19 kept us waiting till now to finish our exams at least now the good news is that the exam will be held on the 18th of june and you will be we will be free of our tension and prepare ourselves for the future course of action in our life whatever be the situation still we need to go ahead life has taught us many many lessons but exam is another lesson usually for the exams we study the lessons then write the exam but this time it is the other way about we face a different kind of exam in the society keeping it aside we need to get ready for this exam i mean the subject english and i hope this little video will help you to prepare well for the exam uh there will be a series of videos which i will make them and i will forward them to you please make use of them don't comment there may be some shortcomings but please adjust and get ready today i will be dealing with a few of the grammar items the first one is reported speech this carries five marks hence very important that we do it all of you have studied it but please remember this effort of mine is just to brush up your memory reported speech or indirect speech how it is please remember when we speak we speak or we communicate in statements questions and orders or commands or requests when i say statements they are a statement which states something it can be true or it can be false questions they are of two type one is called wh questions second one is called yes or no type of question or open ended questions wh questions because they begin with wh why where when which how yes or no type of question or what you call the open ended questions because the answer is either yes or no the end is open for yes or no so we call them yes or no questions or open ended question and then we Uh, also speak in orders or commands or request there is a fourth type which is called exclamatory sentence but it comes in statements we need to convert it into statement and then apply it then apply it okay please remember when we put the things into uh, indirect speech or reported speech first if it is statements then we will have to use or introduce the pronoun that and we have got if it is wh question well nothing to do there if it is yes or no questions then either you introduce whether or if anyone either way if it is order or request or commands then please introduce to and remember this let's take the example tamanna said your husband is flourishing today as a rich man now see there tamanna said said is the reporting verb He reported, "Your husband is flourishing today as a rich man," and the answer will be, "Tamanna stated that her husband was flourishing that day or that time as a rich man." Now you can see the difference there. I have written it in red letters. See, in the first case, Tamanna said, "Your husband." It has become Tamanna stated that. It could be also said that your husband has become. her husband is flourishing has become was flourishing today has become that day or that time as a rich man 
Hence, we can make out the difference that is change of pronoun. Your has become her husband. Then is past tense has become was. Is past tense is was. Then today the time signifying fact has become that day or that time. Hence, you must remember that when you change into indirect speech, we change it into past tense. We change it into past tense. Take the second example. Alif, what is poetry? So this is a WH question. Hence the answer would be Alif Alu asked Borges what poetry was. Please see here the helping verb is which was immediately after what. Whereas come here when it comes to indirect speech it comes the last. Please remember this is past tense is was. Alif Alu asked Borges what poetry was. We have not introduced that here because this is not a statement. Go to the third example. Gonzalo. Do you want snuff? This is an yes or no type of question. The answer would be Gonzalo asked Laura if or whether. Please remember the spelling of whether. Don't go for W-E-E-A-T-H-E-R. Please remember that it is W-H-E-T-H-E-R. Gonzalo asked Laura if she wanted snuff. Now see the change that has taken place. Laura, if or whether is introduced anyone, then past tense of want, wanted stuff. Don't make it double past tense. Did she want snuff? Did she want it? It is wrong. It could be, did she want snuff? But instead of that, do she wanted snuff? First, well, fourth example. Minister, get away from the prison. You can consider this as a request. You can consider this an order, whatever it is. But the nature is the same. Answer is minister asked or commanded. Please remember here, asked is an umbrella term. Whether it is for request, whether it is for command, whether it is for order, it works for everybody. If you have got any confusion, then better you use the word reporting verb as asked. Otherwise, if you are very sure, requested, then use the reporting verb as requested. If it is order, if you are very sure, then use it. Otherwise, to be safe, asked is a very good alternative. Minister asked or commanded the prisoner to get away from the prison. Please see there, to is introduced because it is a command or a request and nothing else, nothing else. So, these four examples will help us uh, to understand. Let's go over to some of the examples, practical examples, where uh, we will understand a little better way. For example, you have your uh, direct and indirect speech, some of the examples. Okay, please see here. Dialogue between Laura and Gonzalo. Okay. First we come here, Donna, Laura. Do you use a shoe brush as a handkerchief? Gonzalo, what right have you to criticize my actions? Laura, my neighbor's right. I don't care to listen to nonsense. You are very polite. When you change it to indirect speech, first you need to find out what kind of uh, thing it is. Is it a WH question? Is it a yes or no type of question? Is it a statement, request or a command? Okay, now we have got do you use a shoe brush as a handkerchief? It is a W. Uh, it is not a WH question, but yes or no type of question. The answer could be yes or no. Now see how the uh, change is done here. You will find here. Laura questioned Gonzalo if he used his shoe brush as a handkerchief, which he asked what right she had to criticize his actions. Donna Laura, very interesting example. Donna Laura replied that she had a neighbor's right. Don Gonzalo continued that he didn't care to listen to nonsense. But Donna Laura remarked that he was very polite. I want you to see the difference again. Let's go back. Do you use a shoe brush as a handkerchief? How it is done? Laura. If he used his shoe brush as a handkerchief, 
Now see here. Do you use a shoe brush as a handkerchief? If he used, past tense is used here, used a shoe brush as a handkerchief. No other change. Now please see here, for which is added. It is a linker. It is a cohesive device which you can use or you need not use. If you use, it will be perfect. Even otherwise, you can manage it. Hence, the next thing is, what right have you to criticize my actions? So, here it is said, for which he asked her as to what right she had to criticize his actions. Laura, a neighbor's right. Now, Laura's reply, you see, Laura replied that she had a neighbor's right. Next comes, I don't care to listen to nonsense. It is a statement. So, Don Gonzalo continued because he has already started speaking. Hence, the linker continued. Cohesive device continued is used here. Gonzalo continued that he didn't care to listen to nonsense. But Laura remarked, you are very polite. Okay. So, Laura remarked that he was very polite. You are very polite is a statement. Hence, that is used here and the thing is complete. So, this is how we do it. Let's go to the second example and we will be perfect with that. What is the second example? Are you coming on your own? No. What is it? Yes or no type of question. Don Gonzalo, most certainly if it is a sunny morning and not only will I scare away the birds but I will bring and not only will I scare away the birds, I will bring a few crumbs. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Birds are grateful and repay attention. Let's see how it is done. Laura asked Gonzalo if he was coming the next day. Tomorrow has become the next day. Don Gonzalo replied positively and continued that not only he would not only he would not scare away the birds, but he would bring a few crumbs. Laura thanked him and said that birds were grateful and repaid attention. Very easily it is done there. There is no much confusion. I am sure these examples have helped you to understand it. Let's go over to the next uh, aspect in uh, the question. Verb forms or using the right form of the verbs. For which again we have got some practices and they can help us. Before that I need to tell you what is that. Remember. When you change into verb forms, what is very much important there is subject and verb agreement. That is, you have to find out whether the subject is singular or plural. Then, the corresponding helping verb is also required and the past participle is also the verb. If you do this, things would be very easy. I have got some examples and let's see how it can be done. Please see here. A murder was committed in Monaco. The ministers dash summon and it dash decide to sentence the murderer for life and a guard dash is look after him. Now how can we do this? Please remember here. Let's go back. A murder was committed in Monaco. The ministers, now see the subject here, the ministers is plural which means the helping verb also should be plural. Hence, the answer would be the ministers were then the past participle of the given verb summon, summoned. Hence, a murder was committed in Monaco. The ministers were summoned and it, it again the subject, it is singular. Hence, the helping verb will be was. Hence, the answer would be it was decided to sentence the murderer for life and a guard, again singular verb, hence the helping verb will be was. A guard was placed, past participle of place, to look after him. Very easy. Let's go to the second example. The kingdom neither had a guillotine nor an executioner. Therefore, a council dash. Now, council is a sing singular, subject is singular, it is not plural, hence helping verb also will be singular. Therefore, a council was called. Call, past participle is called. It, again singular. Hence, it was decided to write a letter to the French government. The letter was sent. Past participle of send is 
send sent okay take the next example the ministers decided to address an inquiry to the french government to get a bulletin the letter was sent because letter is singular okay letter was sent the reply from the french was that machine and an expert could dash supply see here machine and an expert could be supplied so the helping verb we have used is be be supplied for 1600 and 16000 francs the king thought it over that the people wouldn't stand it again a council was called to settle the matter after many meetings they decided to approach the king of italy let's go over to one more example tamanna had 1000 acres whereas basavaya owned only 800 a word was sent word is singular past tense or past participle okay word was sent to tamanna asking him to sell 200 acres when tamanna did not agree his 200 acres of land was acquired by basavaya forcefully a fence was built around that land now please remember here 200 seems like a plural but we are not worried about that we we consider 200 as a unit 200 acres of land was acquired though here there is acres we are not discussing about acres we are discussing about land which is singular hence be careful in this type of examples don't go for plural helping verb please remember the subject is not 200 subject is land okay i'm sure you, it was very easy for you to understand the verb forms using the right form the next is dialogue writing dialogue writing let us remember and go over for some examples dealing with examples will help us please remember dialogue sir every language has got a function so we call them as language functions so how it is for the first of all just see the expression of greeting when we greet people how do we express say good morning good afternoon good evening good night okay and similarly we respond to such type of greetings with similar words okay that is expression of greeting expression of personal habits how it is see sometimes it says i always get up in the morning i often watch tv sometimes i sleep off i usually tell the truth see that is the way i express myself okay the response will be is it so we ask that question i often okay i often a study in the night that is nice sometimes i help the poor people that is great i usually get up early in the morning that is good see the response it should be a corresponding request a response third the expression of leave taking leave taking when we say bye to others we say bye to the person the reply can be okay then see you bye bye now bye take care goodbye is replied by goodbye see you later can be replied fine see you thank you so much see you soon all right may i take leave bye well it is time for me now to go a reply can be in a similar way it can be some other way of expression possible there would you please could possibly if you don't mind what are this you see would you please mind helping me to understand this particular concept could you possibly come tomorrow to my house to teach me how to change from direct language to indirect language if you don't mind please give me your notes we can use this the way we want to use them then the expression of request sorry to trouble you i will be grateful if you lend me your notes for the study purposes i hope you don't mind lending me your notes you can express or you can use in that way similarly you can also use expressing likes and dislikes and again i am not available in this school year i like getting 
wet in the rain or for the first rain, monsoon rain. I am fond of the scenic beauty, the nature. I love going or traveling by train. You can express, you can use uh, your likes or dislikes. Similarly, you have got to use the language to express your gratitude. I am grateful to you. It's very nice of you. It's very kind of you. Thank you so much. We have got plenty of examples here and uh, that may not be possible. Hence, let's go over to the examples, uh, practical examples uh, and uh, study them. See here, question, complete the following dialogue. Deepak and his wife, Rani, plan to have a holiday. They discuss the options. What is that? Deepak. He says, Rani, today my boss told me that I could take a vacation. I could take a holiday. Okay. Now, what is the reply from Rani? She congratulates him. Hence, how should we write it? Rani says, Wow, congratulations. That is nice to hear. It's something nice that has happened to us. Deepak, suggesting a place. Now, you must remember here, they are given an option to go for a, uh, for a vacation, for a holiday. So, he says, he is suggesting a place. How can he use the language there? Shall we go to Bangalore? Or shall we go to Madras? Or shall we go to Mumbai? Disagree. It would be too cold. Suppose suppose he suggests, shall we go to uh, Mysore? Or shall we go to Uti? It will be very cold. Disagree. So she may say, I am very sorry. I wouldn't like to go to Uti because it is very cold. Please remember that given option or the given uh, uh, part should agree with your Reply. Now, Deepak's reply is giving an option. He gives an option. Okay. Shall we go to Mysore? It will be very lovely. If you go to Uti, it will be very lovely. He gives an option to her. It's quite easy. You just need to bring yourself in that context. We have got another one here. See, uh, that is Raju is studying in Pew's second year and he is suffering from fever. So, he wants to meet the principal and get leave. How do they do that? Okay. Just see here. Raju seeks permission to enter the office. Principal, what is the matter, Raju? And he gives the permission. Raju, sir, I am suffering from fever for some days. Request to sanction leave. He wants the principal to sanction leave for him. Principal gives permission. Raju thanks and goes. So, the things are given here. It's like this. May I come in, sir? He seeks permission to enter the office. So, he asks, may I come in, sir? See how politely he asks. Now, the principal gives permission. Yes, come in. What is the matter, Raju? Okay. Sir, I am suffering from fever for some days. Since two days or three days. Next, he requests to sanction the leave. How does he request? Would you please sanction me leave for two days, sir? Would you please? See how the request is made. Would you please? Or may I request you to sanction two days leave, sir? Use permission. No problem. You may take leave. Then he thanks, expresses the gratitude or gratefulness. Thank you very much, sir. With that, the dialogue ends. So, I am sure uh, you understood something from this as well. Okay. Now, let's go over to idioms. As uh, there will be a two marks question or sometimes three marks questions. Idioms. Please remember, an idiom may be defined as an expression peculiar to a language. It is a special phrase whose total meaning is different from individual words in the phrase. Idiomatic language is expressive, apt language, quote, practice, and useful if not only emphasizes what we want to say but also in impresses the listener and the reader. Okay, I will enlarge the screen. Next, I have got some examples here. Please understand what I have written and read is an idiomatic expression. She felt like a fish out of water in that sophisticated company. What is the meaning of feeling or feel like a fish out of water? It is said, she felt uncomfortable in that like fish out of water means feel uncomfortable. Now You see there is no relationship to the expression and to the meaning. So that is idiomatic language. 
See the second one here. Abhi passed the exam with flying colors. Colors have nothing to do there. The meaning is Abhi passed the exam with a very high marks or grade or percentage. Third, Pooja was on cloud nine when she was promoted. What does it mean to be on cloud nine? Pooja was very happy when she was promoted. So to be on cloud nine means to be very happy. Okay. Uh, some examples. In the heart of rural Pudukote, young women dash the roads on their bicycles. Jamila Bibi, who has dash cycle, told it was her right. Now, the options given here are in red letter. Take two, give up, zip along. It's very important that you know the meaning of these expressions. Otherwise, you are not able to, not able to use them. Second, you must remember to adapt them to the situation. What I mean is, you may have to change sometimes from, from singular to plural, from present tense to past tense. I think in this example itself, that option is here. In the heart of rural Pudukote, young women, the answer is, I have written in blue ink, zip along the roads on their bicycle, zip along, go fast. Okay. Jamila Bibi, who has taken to now, please remember, we have got a present perfect sentence here. Who has taken to given? Option is take to. And we change it to taken to. Who has taken to cycling, told it was her right. What if you were to write who has took to? Who has took to is not the right expression. It cannot come in that way. It is a present perfect sentence and it has to be who has taken to hence please remember this the passive form or the past participle of the verb that we need to change go to the next example the ministers decided to tell the criminal that to run away they did so but the criminal said that if he ran away people would dash him the given options are turn their backs be hanged to and straight out now, first you should know the meaning. What do you mean by turn their backs? Turn their backs means reject the proposition given. Be hanged to. We are not bothered. Be hanged to. And straight out is direct telling or directly expressing. Let's see how we can use them. I have given here straight out and turn their backs. Let's see. The ministers decided to tell the criminal straight out to run away. Meaning to say without mincing words, go away. Please go away from the prison. Though it is something very strange to say that, but they had no other option. Hence, the answer is straight out. You see there, there is no change here. You can just write as it is. But see the second option. They did so. But the criminal said that if he ran away, people would, see, turn their backs on him. You are lucky here. No change is required because people is plural. Hence, it should be turn their backs. What if it was here, but the criminal said that if he ran away, his brother would dash on him. His brother, singular, then it would have, would have become. If he ran away, his brother would turn his back on him. So change should be kept in mind. Let's have one more example. The election campaign in Umofia was dash. All knew that the honorable minister would have landslide victory in full swing what do you mean by inner soup inner soup refers to falling into a problem facing a problem landslide victory refers to a big margin of victory a large victory and in full swing means a lot of effort full swing for example preparations for exam are in full swing where everybody is very active now which one uh, fits here i have written in blue language uh, blue color please see here the election campaign in Omofia was in full swing. No change is required as it is. All knew that the Honorable Minister would have a landslide victory. Hence, there is no change as it is. We write it. Let's go for one more example. Sheila Rani Chunkat included mobility dash the literacy drive. The neo cyclist dash the hostile remarks from some men. Turn a deaf ear means don't care, careless attitude. To come off, to come off means actually to mature. Then as a part of 
it's very simple as a part. Now let's see where we can uh, insert the image. Sheila Rani Chunkat included mobility dash as a part of literacy drive because uh, cycling was one of the uh, methods she used for the literacy drive. That was not the only method. That's why as a part of then the neo cyclist dash to the hostile remarks from some men. You see given example uh, given uh, idiom is turn a deaf ear. But here we have to write the past participle form hence it is changed into turned a deaf ear or much better would be turned their deaf ear to the hostile remarks from some men. One more example. The narrator saw a deer in a park. Suddenly the deer dashed to him to snatch the pack of food and dashed his eyes and howled deep. Here it is something big. The given idioms are straighten up, looked into, came up. These are very simple phrasal verbs here. Straighten up. That is straighten up once. Looked into, looked intently, came up, come up. Okay. See how we can use them now here. The narrator saw a deer in a park. Suddenly the deer came up, came up to him to snatch the pack of food and looked into his eyes. Second one, looked into his eyes and bowed deeply. It was surprising to him. Okay. I hope these things will make uh, the idioms expression very easier. We have got one more example here that is from the water lesson. Marcus knew that he would win but he did not want dash a single vote. All the while Roof weighed down with guilt pretended dash. To be in high spirits or to throw away and pass by. This is the right thing. What do you mean by to be in high spirits? To be in high spirits means to remain in an elevated spirit, elevated attitude. To throw away. To throw away means actually to lose it from your side. Throw away. You don't want to give it away. Pass by. Pass by. Okay. Let's see. Marcus knew that he would win. But he did not want dash a single vote. He did not want to throw away a single vote. Please remember to throw away a single vote. All the while Roof weighed down with guilt. Pretended to be in high spirits. Pretended to be in high spirits. Okay. So with this we finish the idioms and the next one we go to the linkers. Uh, we have to take some examples, idioms and phrases. Then we go over to linkers. What are the linkers that I am speaking about? Again you have got four marks here. They are also called as cohesive linkers. I think there are some other examples I can. Monaco, Monaco was on the borders of Italy and France. Dash. It was a tiny little kingdom. It had a real kinglet. Dash an army. The king had imposed many taxes. Dash. It was difficult for him to meet the expenses. Dash. To get more income, he started gaming houses. I think there are some more other examples here. So how to do that? You hear. Monaco was on the borders of Italy and France. Dash. Let's see. This is the right thing. This is given option and in the blue order uh, ink I have written the order to be answered here. First one. Though. Though it was a tiny little kingdom, it had a real kinglet and an army. The king had imposed many taxes as it was difficult for him to meet the expenses in order to get more income, he started gaming houses. One thing you must remember is that these 
examples are given from the lesson so you need to visualize the lesson then it would be easier for you to answer this question look at this example Locking had led to landslides and floods. Dashed scarcity of water, oil, and fuel. Women provide with basic needs. Scarcity meant longer walk to satisfy the basic needs. Women knew that the real value of forests was not the timber from a dead tree, dashed springs and streams, food for their cattle, and fuel for their herds. Dash, the women set out to save the trees. The women declared dash they would hug the trees. See, I have written the answer in uh, blue ink. Hence, it would go like this. Logging had led to landslides and floods and scarcity of water, fodder and fuel. Next, since the women provide these basic needs, the scarcity meant longer walks to satisfy the basic needs. Women knew that the real value of forest was not the timber from a dead tree, but the springs and streams, food for their cattle and fuel for their herds. So the women set out to save the trees. The women declared that they would hug the trees. I have missed that. So that is the answer. Let's go to one more example. Tamanna Dash Baswaya were rivals. If Tamanna bought four acres of land, Baswaya would not be able to keep. Dash, all this looked like healthy competition. Dash, gradually, it rose to such a pitch that there was no land left in the village for them to buy. Given uh, options are also and however in the beginning. The order is given here down below in blue ink. So the answer is like this. Tamanna and Baswaya were rivals. If Tamanna bought four acres of land, Baswaya also followed the suit. In the beginning, all this looked like healthy competition. However, gradually it rose to such a pitch that there was no land left in the village for them to buy. Okay, so we go over to the next question that is note making and uh, all of you know this note making again easier one and all of you must get the four marks that are given you are given a small paragraph that's it and down below uh, you will find note making you just need to fill the blanks that are given below which is not at all difficult i'm sure uh, it's quite easy for all of you I will take some examples from here and uh, help you to understand or bring back this notion to your mind. You must remember to draw the flow chart. Without flow chart, your answer won't be considered. Now see here, there is a small passage. An English explorer of the Antarctic continent expeditions into Antarctica. The first begun in 1901 penetrated into the interior of the continent, accomplishing several scientific objectives and was completed in 1904. The second expedition started in 1910 with the main objective of discovering the South Pole. Scott and his team made the great march to the pole to find with great disappointment that Norwegians had reached there earlier. Okay. Now please remember here. An English explorer of the Antarctic continent. Captain Scott. Okay. So see here. An English explorer. Which means it should be Captain Scott here. So the number one is Captain Scott. Commanded two expeditions. Okay. Very easy here. One was in, okay, first in, now find out the date here. First began in 1901 and the second one, you can see here, second expedition started in 1910. Please remember, there is 1904, but that was completion. That is not asked here. Then, penetrated into, now go back to the passage. Yes. Penetrated into the 
penetrated into the interior of the continent okay so the answer would be interior of the continent penetrated then the objective was okay one thing you must remember here in this thing maybe these numbers you have to go in the order then things would be easy for you so let us follow that order penetrating into the interior of the continent and then the fourth is accomplished what did he accomplish here search for that word continent accomplishing several scientific objectives and was completed in 1904 then the second expedition okay so accomplished several objectives then completed the expedition in 1904 that is the answer then come back here and you will have here which we have left out three this we already filled actually so the objective was objective is very clearly given here okay objective was of discovering the south pole that is the second expedition returned with disappointment because the norwegians had already reached there so you see here if you read the passage properly the answer is very clear let's go for one more example here bird flu is a disease caused by avian influenza viruses the word virus is very familiar to you in these days it occurs naturally among birds birds it is a contagious disease it generally attacks chicken ducks and turkeys turkeys is a kind of bird it was first found in south africa in 1964 actually it spreads very rapidly very fast among the birds and destroys their internal organs the mortality rate reaches up to 100% within 48 hours migratory what of name of the disease so name of the disease is here what is that avian influenza bird no that is caused by the virus the name is bird flu is a disease okay so next one is caused by caused by the virus that is avian influenza okay number 2 number 3 first found in where was it first found okay it is said here first found in south africa so south africa in the year 1964 attacks on that is number 5 we have seen that is chicken then uh, ducks and turkeys three answers are there chickens ducks and turkeys it destroys what does it destroy it is given here very clearly destroys their internal organs internal organs and the last one rate of mortality is 100% within 48 hours so this is a easiest option that is available for you to get four marks so please remember that okay let's go to the next item of our study note making we have finished with application three marks question which is once again very very important okay how to go about i have some examples here please remember i just run through it be written in two ways a letter of application giving all the details it has got two parts covering letter and curriculum with a or we call it as bio data okay see the example write a letter of application in response to the following advertisement which appeared in it can be written as all the hindi or indian express then dated the date would be given write x x x for name and y y y for address it is please do not reveal who you are and from which place you are that's why you can write this xxx and yyy for address now the format is given very clearly here okay please follow it very carefully you should get all the five marks first from address okay from address is your address and you are xxx and your address is yyy so this covers your from address next comes the date so please write the date please remember please see the application date and accordingly write the date because sometimes it is said apply within one week and the given date would be something different it may not suit your exam date hence uh, reading the question you should be very careful next comes to address to address okay 
that is whom are you applying to usually it is given write a letter of application to the secretary sometimes the board of directors sometimes to the director hence to address next comes the salutation that is sir madam or respected sir or madam don't write sir and madam both you can write any one option then comes the subject so please remember this is very very important subject what is the subject subject should be in the form of a statement that is application for the post of lecturer application for the post of attender application for the post of manager whatever it is only that much is enough next comes reference reference can be separate or it can be part of your uh, uh, the body of the letter with reference to the advertisement appeared in the newspaper decan herald dated 15th march and then you can continue or you can keep it separately you are free to do whichever you want then comes the body of the application and then thank you please remember don't write thanking you thank you and then yours faithfully there is no apostrophe here and your signature your signature is x x x please remember this let's go for one example here ah before that bio data what should be there in your bio data it's very very important it's not enough that you write the application you should give your bio data your bio data should or it should uh, contain your name please remember here x x x x your address y y y date of birth whatever is your date of birth please remember it uh, the requirement in the application accordingly write your date of birth your qualification please write your qualification in tabular form and the first qualification should be your recent one suppose a degree is the qualification desired there then it begins with degree then puc then sslc you need not go below sslc then the language is known whichever language that you know especially please see refer the question or uh, wanted what languages are desired there additional qualification sometimes computer knowledge or uh, any other additional qualification that is desired if you have you can write it there your experience experience of working in the previous establishment or esta uh, previous company or previous school or college then the reference reference is not required you can leave it and please write last an undertaking the undertaking is a line which says the above details are true to the best of my knowledge and your signature xxx with that it is done once again to remember some hints while writing the application first from address who is applying that is you then the date when are you applying for the uh, job to address to whom are you applying then the salutation that is dear sir or respected sir then the subject what is the subject of the application reference then the body of the letter leave taking that is concluding then the signature okay let there is one model here let's see what is the question write a letter of application in response to the following advertisement which appeared in the new indian express dated 20th december 2012 write x x x s for name and y y y for addresses okay what is advertisement see this is the advertisement wanted who is wanted assistant teacher okay so qualification bsc b ed required fluency in kannada and english knowledge of computer is appreciated apply within 7 days to the headmaster svm high school vinobhnagar davangere now please remember here december 20th 2012 is the advertisement which appeared in the newspaper and the name of the newspaper is the new indian express and you need to apply within 7 days meaning to say before 20 7th of december please remember this when you write the date see how it is written here okay first from address you are xxx and you are from yyyy please next comes the date 26 december 2012 you can follow any style 26 bar 12 bar 2012 or 26 december 2012 then the two address to whom should be the application advertisement says here apply within 7 days to okay right so the headmaster svm high school vinobhnagar davangere then the salutation sir respected sir okay and see the subject 
application for the post of assistant teacher i said it should be in the form of a uh, statement hence application for the post of assistant teacher don't write applying don't write i want to apply let it be in the form of a statement then comes reference you need not write your reference you can directly begin the body of the letter of with reference to the advertisement appeared in the newspaper the indian express dated 20th december 2012 okay it has written it is here it is written separately but the other option is to make it a part of the letter like you know i highlight here you just write like this in response to an advertisement in the new test indian express dated 20th december 2012 for the post of assistant teacher i wish to submit my application or it could be i would like to apply for the post of assistant teacher in your school i have indicated details of my qualification experience etc in the enclosed resume me for your kind pursuit should you inquire any further information i shall be glad to furnish it either in person or by post this could be made still shorter what is that you can just write in response to your advertisement in the new indian express dated 20th december 2012 i would like to apply for the post of assistant teacher my details are given below thank you yours sincerely you can write in that way as well now see the bio data that is written name address date of birth qualification bsc ba with distinction you can better add where did you do your bsc which college which university then your puc then your sslc there is an added advantage languages known english kannada and hindi additional qualification one year course in computer appliance experience one year teaching experience in a private school reference the headmaster ss school haveri that is actually he must have taught one year in this school so is asking is giving a reference which need not be a part of it this is how we write an application please remember the form and don't miss any of the steps okay let's go over to the next item speech writing what is there in speech writing okay let us go for the exam you write speech you should do. remember the following items i the first person because you are speaking as a talk as a speaker so a first person referring then addressing the audience very very important do not begin your speech directly you need to address the audience then you need to introduce the topic what are you talking about what topic are you going to or topic are you going to speak upon then the purpose of the speech keeping the audience in mind then concluding speech so very important aspects here are addressing the audience and concluding the speech otherwise your speech becomes only half okay so what you should remember points to be remembered be thorough with the format of the speech what is the format of the speech first wish your audience that is good morning good afternoon good evening whatever is the situation occasion accordingly please wish them then inform them about your topic that is today i am going to speak on for example i am going to speak on covid 19 pandemic or today i would like to speak on the topic the road safety week or today i would like to uh, would like to speak on the topic uh, accidents road accidents so introduce your topic once you introduce your topic then you need to elaborate your speech and it's quite easy thing because the points would be given in the question itself what you need to speak upon so elaborate the hints given in the question paper don't use high sounding bombastic language use very simple english small sentences your spellings and your structure of the sentence should be proper and conclude your speech with a thank you concluding is very very important one example is given here your college is celebrating road safety week you are asked to speak in your college assembly highlighting some of the traffic rules and mention the need to follow them write a speech in about 100 words and help is given there hints are given your speech should include the following points road accident 
what are the causes for the road accidents how do the uh, road accidents take place that's because of the negligence or maybe because of the use of mobile phones while driving or sometimes overtaking or sometimes because of the speed hence these are the points given it's quite easy for you to write a speech of around 100 words making use of these points okay see one example model is given respected principle week we are seeing increase in traffic accidents these days the main reasons are increase in traffic and ignoring the traffic rules people's jump signals do not follow lane discipline and speed and overtake also the use of mobile phones while driving also contributes to accidents also is repeated here twice drunken driving is also another cause therefore we must follow the traffic rules very strictly to avoid accidents we should not use mobile phones while driving and must not drive rashly to overtake thank you very much the speech is ended here there is another example given here imagine that you have been invited by a social science club to speak on superstition prepare a speech in about 120 words on the basis of the points given below superstition blind belief okay uh, see the hints given traditional beliefs irrational gullible minds fear ignorance illiteracy lack of scientific knowledge these are all reasons okay for the uh, superstitions common beliefs which are the examples cat crossing one's path presence of owls in the courtyard measures to eradicate how to eradicate the superstitions scientific clarifications creating awareness or literacy drive these are the ways we can eradicate hence a speech is written here ladies and gentlemen i would like to congratulate the science club for their efforts to create awareness about the superstition superstition is nothing but blind belief they arise from the traditional beliefs followed by us the reasons for that are fear ignorance illiteracy and lack of scientific knowledge are the main causes of this then it is elaborated as it is asked hence please remember uh, don't leave this question out because you are asked to do something and the help is also given right there hence it would be very easy for you to score these marks next phenomenal references another four marks which uh, are there for asking and it is the easiest question It is mobile phone has become an essential thing people are using it everywhere but it is disturbing them to the maximum extent it harms their health even school children also use it they are losing their concentration due to it it also harms their impulses many species of birds are at the edge of extinct extinct because of this modern gadget it has continuous radiation when in use almost all living beings will be affected by this if care is not taken now you find below here four pronouns you need to write the answer whom or what do they refer to okay in the given example i have highlighted in red uh, ink red color okay first one see here it so number 1 what does it refer here people are using it what are they using it refers to the mobile phone hence the answer would be mobile phone second them whom does them refer here but it is disturbing them so whom does them refer to it refers to the people okay the public third they even school children also use it they are losing their concentration so they refer refers to the school children and the last one this what is that almost all living beings will be affected by this affected by what not mobile phones please remember by continuous radiation okay so please remember that see the next slide 
The scientist dropped the box on his back and prepared to sit on a rock. The rock on which he was about to sit turned out to be a lemming. It asked the scientist to be careful. He was astonished and he couldn't believe that an animal like lemming could speak. First is here his. So what does his refer to? Go here. The scientist dropped the bags on his back. So his refers to scientist. Second, which. The rock on which he was about to sit. So it refers to the rock. Third, it. It asked the scientist to be careful. What is it? It refers to the bird that is lemming. Okay. And number four, he. He was astonished and he couldn't believe. He was astonished and he, he is the scientist. Okay. Another example. Have you heard of the Great Wall of China? It is one of the wonders of the world. Its construction was started in about 221 BC. The great emperor Shi Hong Ti joined three earlier frontier walls to it. He died in 210 BC. Meng, Sh Meng Xian was his general. He did all or most in carrying out the emperor's plans for the construction of the wall. Okay. First one, it. Okay. Now it says it. What is that? Have you heard of the Great Wall of China? It is. So it refers to the Great Wall of China. Two, it's. Its construction was started in about. It's again the Great Wall of China. Number three, he. Now you have to be very careful here. He may refer in one place to someone and in another place to another person, a different person. So number three here, it is here. He died in 210 BC. So he in this place refers to the emperor Shi Hong Ti. Whereas there is one more here that is number four. He did most in carrying out. So he refers to here Meng Xian or the general Meng Xian. So you have to be very careful. The same pronoun may refer to different people in different places. So with this we come to the end of grammar section that is 50 marks are there for grammar. So please rehearse, go through the video, listen to it and go through the examples and I am sure all of you will be able to score around 50 marks in the grammar. I will also send you one more video on the lessons where another 50 marks are pending and uh, study both your grammar elements and also the lessons as well as your book marks. I wish you all the best. I also offer you my prayers. Stay home and stay safe and stay fit. Thank you very much.